Right, evening everyone. I know that no one is online tonight, but I still wanted to make a recording just to introduce myself and the module and just give you a bit of context and speak to Learning Unit 1, just some important pointers to look out for. So NCTE is all about um, new communication techniques and it's all about communication in the workplace, what we're trying to achieve in terms of reaching um, people on a grand scale, making sure that we are working within the media environment, the corporate environment, and just making sure that we're able to communicate in ways that are effective and we're able to reach as many people as possible. So how NCTE works is that your material is divided into three um, separate elements, that being your ICE tasks, which if you go to more resources on BC Learn, you will see um, your ICE activities folder there. And if you click on that, there is a list of um, many ICE tasks that you can choose between. And you need to at least complete four of those. So if you have four, that is um, the minimum to do to make sure that you get all your ICE marks. But what I do recommend doing is trying to work through all those ICE tasks that are there. And the reason for that is that those activities have been designed to help you and help you through your studying. So, you know, they are there for a reason. And if you do have the time and um, you're working through the content, it is always so good to end off the learning process with working through an activity. So I really would recommend doing that because it does help you with the content and it does help you understand the module um, in more detail. The next thing that this module is made up of is your part and your part actually then relates to your POE. So your part, which I will get into during your NSS session, I'll start briefly speaking to it in our next collab, but it's all based around Pringles as the scenario and then what we do is we um, work through it in terms of communication and social media and what have you. So the scenario of Pringles is used in the part and in the POE, and there's connection between the two. So it's not that you submit the part and then um, submit, uh, get it back, fix it, and resubmit with the POE. They are two separate um, assessments, but the theme is the same through both of them. And then finally, your POE, that's your summative. That is what is submitted at the end of the semester. And that contains um, the biggest percentage of work. And that is what is in place of an exam. So for this module, you don't have an exam, but you have this POE, you have the part, um, and then you've got your ICE. So those are the three academic aspects that make up this module. You'll see there is a prescribed textbook if you look um, on um, BC Learn, as well as in our WhatsApp group, you will see that there is a, a OneDrive. And in that OneDrive, there are some notes for a few of the learning units. There's also a digital copy of the textbook, as well as your PACER, the Colab roster, um, your module outline, your part, and your POE. So that OneDrive is our go-to. Any documents that I think you need, any documents that I think are important, will go into that OneDrive. And then once our collabs are done, I will download the recording and then that gets uploaded to YouTube. And then it means when you guys are available to listen to it, you're able to actually um, go and watch the videos and engage with it. And, you know, the videos are there to unpack certain concepts go through material, answer questions that you may have. But the idea is that, um, you know, between the collabs, your textbook, your VC Learn, your module outline, between all of that, you are covered in terms of the content for NCTE 6222. The other thing is please feel free to send me WhatsApps or emails if there's anything that you are either battling with or need a bit more support with. Please feel free to use our WhatsApp group um, or you can privately message me um, or you can send me an email. I'm here to support you as much as you need 
Um, I am based in KZN, so I am based in SA time. So um, I try and reply as quickly as possible to messages because I know some people are working all over the world and so on. So if you get a message from me that's quite short to the point, please don't think it's me being rude or um, being very abrupt. It's actually that I know that a lot of people are trying to juggle studying and um, daily life. So my view is I'd rather get a message uh, a message to you or reply to you as quickly as possible, rather than waiting till I have time to write a long length. Uh, lengthy message. So please know that it's just me making sure that I get that information back to you with whatever you're asking me as quickly as possible. Because, um, yeah, I'm lecturing I'm, I'm in the online space as an online tutor, obviously, but I also do work at the Durban North and Maritzburg campuses. So um, I am lecturing till three o'clock every day. So just know that it's not me being rude. That's all I want you to be aware of. Okay. Right, so with regards to um, the first learning unit, it is very much based on the basics of the of communication and what we need to be aware of. So if you have a look at the um, active learning, it's really nice in that it leads you through a particular chapter of the textbook. And what you'll notice with the textbook is it is taking a more relaxed conversational tone. And it's trying to basically enlighten you to these events and this ways of communication, but it's not a very theory heavy textbook. And that's actually nice for you guys because it's not a theory heavy module. It's more about the application and the discussion around things than the actual theory itself. So there's some times where you will in text reference and have sources in your reference list, but there's also going to be times where you're writing a document um, such as an email or doing an Instagram post, whatever it may be, where you don't have in text referencing and you don't have that academic approach. So you'll notice that the textbook leads that perspective when you work through it. So when we're looking at this particular learning unit, you're looking at, like I said, the communication basics. So why do we communicate? Why does it matter? Things such as a transmitted meaning versus a negotiated meaning versus a recreated meaning. And what that means is it's the message that goes out directly that is accepted as is. Negotiated is when people take that message and interpret it. And recreated is where someone takes the message and takes on a completely different understanding or interpretation of what was meant to be read. And when we think about communications, this can obviously be in terms of written communication, oral communication, every form of um, uh, media or emails or newsletters, it's all communication. So what's really important is to make sure that we don't only think, um, think that our communication is only about um, you know, written documents that are shared within a work environment. We're looking at communication as a whole. And why we actually even have communication is we're dealing with things such as the um, operation side of a, um, of a company. We work through the intelligence side of a company and we also do it to build relationships. So what's really cool is that this module does look at the different levels of communication from all different perspectives. All right. And what you guys need to think about is how communication is effective so that everything that you do within this module, it's about trying to reach people. It's about making sure that your message that is going out is effective, that it is reaching people, that it means that it actually is doing what it is intended to do. So what's really, really important is to, when you're doing your own work, is to make sure that when you look over it, when you read over it, that you look at it and go, is my lecture, oh, not my lecture, sorry, my OT, my online tutor, or in this case, is Annie going to understand it, how I'm intending the message to go across? So what's super important is just to make sure that when you read it, read it as an outsider, think of the, if I'm left with any questions at the end of your um, assessment, it means that you haven't fulfilled your job completely. It means you need to spend a bit more time honing it in and making sure all questions are answered. All right. 
And in um, your uh, textbook, there's this graphic. So it's figure 1.3, and it's the elements of professionalism. And this is so important for anyone, those that haven't worked yet, those that are in the work environment, but it's that you need to be dependable, be a team player, be respectful, be positive, be ethical, and be the best. And to me, that is really like how I like running my collabs, especially with being respectful, being ethical, because if we have these basic tenements within ourselves or these six qualities, it means that we're working in an effective manner and that the communication can be trusted and we can look at this communication and know that it is um, truthful, accurate and fair. All right. So when we're working with our communication, we have to think about the digital environment. We I mean, you guys are studying online. We have this digital environment. It is base, the basis of what we experience. Sorry about the noise in the background, guys. We've just suddenly had a massive downpour outside. So if you hear a bit of rain in the background, that is what it is. So we have to think about our social communication model and our digital environment about thinking about technology. So when you guys are working through the material, look specifically at page 55, look at that social communication model and think about how technology can be used effectively to again, spread a, an accurate and truthful and effective message. So we always need to make sure that we're using the tools to the best of our abilities, whether it be Instagram, whether it be a website, whether it be um, a Facebook post, a tweet, all of those different elements. We as society tend to rely on digital communication. So we've got to make sure that we are using it to the best of our ability so that we are getting a accurate representation and to make sure that the message going out is going out in the best possible manner. Then lastly, what I want you guys to be aware of with that last learning unit is that it brings in ethical and legal communication. And you know, when we are working within an academic environment or in a work environment, we always need to be ethical and make sure we fall in line with a legal, um, fall in line, sorry, with a, uh, within the laws of a company and obviously the country. So just think about things that are deemed unethical, like withholding information, distorting information, plagiarizing, which you guys obviously are very familiar with in the academic space. Um, there's difference between an ethical dilemma versus an ethical lapse. An ethical dilemma is when something unethical has occurred and it has been almost deliberately done and it needs to be fixed, where a lapse is more when something happens not deliberately but occurs and still needs to be fixed in the same way. So what we need to think about is how we actually ensure ethical communication. And with that, to be ethical, we fall within this legal framework to make sure that our contract, contracts are um, done properly and upheld, that there is effective employee communication, that we um, make sure that we respect intellectual property so that um, we don't have any issues in terms of ethics and um, the legal issues. We make sure that there's no such things as defamation, that's there's transparency. So when we are working within an ethical and a legal framework, it means that we are not doing things to deliberately deceive, we're not doing things to trick people. We are trying to be as um, truthful as possible and as accurate as possible. So it's really important to make sure that, you know, you yourself are working within this environment and also make sure that, you know, you um, think about it in terms of business and in terms of academics. So how you will develop your skills within your career is through critical thinking, collaboration, knowledge through application as well as analysis, making sure that you have good business e business ethics and social responsibility, that you use um, tech or IT in the best possible way um, available to you, and that you also have a, some level of data literacy, being able to understand and analyze data. So that's it from me for tonight. That, that is the main focus of the of learning unit one.
please make sure you go through learning unit one, work through the activities, the ask tasks. And if you have any questions or anything you need me to clarify, I'm here to help you in any way. Thanks guys. And hopefully I'll see you soon.